So, this is what you want me to tell them? The people, your people who have lived in dark exile all these many years with their, their backs up against some Babylonian wall. It was one thing when you had me tell the king that a, a virgin would give birth. Go back to sleep, my dear. I'm talking to God. Is he listening? Uh, what do you mean, is he listening? Well, are you listening to him? You see what I mean, Lord? Even my own wife questions me. Now, you are God Almighty. You do what you want to do. But you want me to tell the people that Messiah is going to be just uh, some plain fellow like one of us? That he's going to suffer? He's going to die? Why not Moses uh, to lead us out of exile? Or, uh, or King David, uh, the mighty warrior, not some tiny li little... Ah, uh, where is the oil for the lamp? It's where it always is. Uh, ah, this is what I'm talking about, Lord. We are a people in darkness, stumbling around, stubbing our toe on the sin of the world. Uh, we need a mighty rescuer. Uh, we need, uh, we need a savior, not some tiny little. Huh. Such a tiny flame. And the whole room is filled with light. I am a man of unclean lips. Forgive me, Lord. I will tell them what you have shown me, even if I don't understand it. I will trust you, good Lord, in your own good time to, to bring us uh, Emmanuel, to bring us light and hope. Yeah. Light and hope. I'm coming back to bed. Light and hope, as Isaiah spoke right there at the end. I don't know about you, but I know many of us in this world need a little more light and hope. You know, the world around us is so dark at times, and some of us are dealing with our own darkness. Many of us are fumbling around in the dark, looking for hope in the wrong places. We're looking for it in other ways outside of what God's plan and what his, his idea of hope is for us. So like God was telling Isaiah, he had a plan. Isaiah was speaking for a people that were in the dark in the time. Israel had gone through, through many battles and many struggles. And during this time, it was almost like God was silent in many ways. Like you and I, sometimes we deal with that as well. We are seeking God, and it seems like he's silent, not hearing us. And so I love Isaiah's wife, where she says, is he listening? And then she questions the, the bigger question in, are you listening? Asking Isaiah, was he listening to God? How many of us go to God and we, 
lay out all our own needs and then we walk away never giving him time to respond or when he does respond and when he does say something to us we don't want to hear it we want to tell him how to do things our way too often we've already made up our minds what needs to be done or how it needs to be done but then we may go to him and question but when he gives us an answer that we don't want to accept then we'll go about it our own way or we'll ask him to do it our way and isaiah was told isaiah 7 14 he says therefore the lord himself will give you a sign this was part of god's plan behold the virgin shall, shall conceive and bear a son and you shall call he shall be called emmanuel and so Isaiah had the, the revelation he was given by God that the, the Messiah was going to be an ordinary man and that he was going to be born a child miraculously from a virgin mother, a young woman of no great standing herself. And not only that, he is told and given the name that the child would be known as, Emmanuel. And one thing about the, the Hebrew names in the, in the old days was each one of them had a significant meaning. It wasn't like they chose a name just because it sounded good. They chose a name because it spoke over what the child was going to be. And in this case, God gave him the name Emmanuel. And that name means God with us. So here, Isaiah was given this revelation of not only the miracle birth, but also the miracle that God was going to be in the flesh of this child. And while that's hard for us to understand, and I'm not going to sit here and try to go into how to explain that in being, but what a miraculous thing it was that God with us. What better thing to bring about hope in the world than him being in the flesh? Now, Isaiah, as you saw in the, in the video, he was questioning God, but he's going to be an ordinary man. Why not Moses? Moses who led the Israelites out from Egypt after 400 years of slavery. He was a rescuer. He was a redeemer. Why not King David, the highest king in the land? For he was the one that brought peace to Israel for so many years. And they were looking for, they knew that the Messiah was going to come from the line of David, that he was going to sit on his throne and that throne was going to last for eternity. So Isaiah is asking, why not one of them? Again, why not my way? Well, if I could do it, I would choose this person or that person. How often do we tell God how we want him to do what he says he's going to do? Oh, but don't do it that way. Do it my way. We don't want to rely on him and his way many times. Sometimes it makes us uncomfortable. And for Isaiah, the message was foolishness. To think of him being not only a normal man, but also being born a baby. And that he was to tell this world that the Messiah was this baby that was coming. This message of the Messiah was foolishness. It reminds me of the scripture that Paul writes saying that the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. But this was the message that God gave Isaiah to tell. And Isaiah finally accepts it. And he, God tells him he is to be a voice crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way. The king is coming. You see, this harkens back to a time when they actually did have people that would do this whenever a king was making his way into a city, city streets. There were people that would run before him. Prepare the way. The king is coming. This was Messiah. This was Isaiah's job. He was to prepare the way. He was to tell people that the Messiah was coming as a baby, as a human. God in the flesh. And then I love the picture of, of his little lamp going dark on him. 
Because like the Jews of Isaiah's day, again, we too live in times of darkness. And Isaiah is confronted with that as his light burns out. For many of us, that may be our personal darkness, be it depression, anxiety, sadness, sickness, health issues, mental health issues, work issues, provision, all kinds of things that can cause us to have this sense of darkness in our lives. And then if you turn on any news channel, what do you see? You see how dark and evil the world is outside of our homes, in our own communities, and across the, the sea and other nations. And we wonder, where is the hope? Where is the light? And so for us, just like the Jews of Isaiah's time, we need hope. We need a rescuer. We need a mighty rescuer. And we have that. His name is Emmanuel, but we call him Jesus. He is the Savior to come. He came to earth as a baby, a tiny flame to light the darkness of the world. And it's interesting, as I was sitting here preparing for this and thinking about Isaiah's picture of that small light and how it lit up the room around him. And then God brought to mind Jesus' own words. I am the light of the world. Whoever follow, follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. How apropos, right? Jesus being born the small flame. And yet he's the light of the world. Isaiah burns that small light and he looks at the room and says, such a tiny flame. And yet it lights up the room. I'm here to tell you, such a tiny flame in the baby, and yet he lights up the world. Emmanuel brings both light and hope with him. And when we trust in him, when we believe in him, when we have placed all our faith in him, then we carry his light and his hope to the world and to those around us that are hurting, that are still in the dark. We are called, just like Isaiah, to bring light into the darkness wherever we go, to be the ones to proclaim, prepare the way the king is coming. We say, prepare the way. Jesus has already come. Prepare your heart, as the great hymn, Joy to the World, says, make him room. Friends, that's what he needs. That's what he wants. That's what you need to have your hope lifted. When times of darkness, when times of sadness come on you, think on Jesus. Think on him being that light and that hope in the world. And let him be that light and that hope within your heart, within your world.